everyone. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of AWS reInvent 2022. This is day one, I should say evening one, of three and a half days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage on theCUBE. Lisa Martin here with Dave Vellante. Dave, we love talking about data, but the most important thing about data is if there's a breach, which are happening more and more frequently, that you can get it back. So data backup, data protection, data resiliency, hugely important. Well, it used to be you got snake bit and then you close the barn door after the horse ran away. Now I think people are a lot more aware that they got to protect their data and be proactive about it. It can't just be an afterthought. It can't be an afterthought. We've got the CTO of Own Backup here. We're going to be talking about that. Adrian Kunzel. Adrian, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having me. Talk yeah. a little bit about Own Backup. The, what is unique about it? So we are the leading SaaS data protection vendor. Um, we've built a business based on uh, the fact that SaaS has become a center of gravity for a lot of companies now. A lot of people have moved with digital transformation and more recently with the COVID effects to digitize their business. Um, our platform is uh, powered by AWS. We've got 5,000 plus customers that trust what we do and to look after their data. Um, we help them with resiliency, compliance, security, uh, and we do it for people who are using Salesforce, ServiceNow, and Microsoft Dynamics 365. Now people are going to say, wait a minute, I, is my data in the cloud isn't already backed up? Why do I, right? That's what they're going to say, so right. how do you respond? Yes, lots yeah. of people <laughs> say that. That is exactly right. Um, so what people are beginning to realize much more is that there's actually a shared responsibility model yes. between your SaaS provider and yourselves. And the, you know, the SaaS providers do a phenomenal job of giving you disaster recovery, a database copy, networking infrastructure, a bunch of security controls at that level. Um, but they're pretty frank about the data you put in there is your data. Right. And just that it's up to you to put the data in there, it's also up to you to keep it in there. Um, and that's not so easy when you've got lots of integrations, you've got users running around in the applications, et cetera. So, yeah, the heart of it is, <clears throat> it's your data, you put it in there, you better be looking after it too. That's so important for customers to understand what is Salesforce's responsibility, what's my responsibility, yeah. so that it really nail that. What are some of the main challenges as we see the cybersecurity landscape has changed so much in the last couple of years, ransomware is now a, when it's going to happen to us, how often, what's going to be the significance. What are some of the main challenges that you're talking with customers about these days? Um, so really, uh, on the data side, it definitely hinges around uh, ransomware, but I would also say, um, when you think about what digital transformation has done for customers, moved you to a world where you've got to be on 24-7, right? You can't afford to have systems down, whether that's uh, your public website or even things your salespeople are using. Um, and so, on the, on the data side, we talk a lot with our customers about really recovery, not so much about backup. Uh, backup is in our name, but our product is called Recover, and there's a reason for that. We're trying to focus on how can we help customers quickly get back to a good state when they've had an incident. So that's kind of the data side of it. On the security side of it, um, it's really about how do they manage all the controls that SaaS providers now give them make sure the right people in their organization can see the right data, and the data they should not be able to see, the data they shouldn't be able to see. Um, and that's just getting increasingly complex, really anchored around the fact that the volume of the data is growing, um, the complexity of that data is growing, and really the sensitivity of that data is growing, right? When you think about all the data privacy rules, 10 years ago we didn't care about keeping a whole bunch of data around. Now you've kind of got to get rid of it. So you've actually got to manage it through its life cycle. So the shared responsibility model as applied to data protection is, is kind of an interesting topic. Because you always think about it for security. And I know security and data protection are these adjacencies, but it's a complicated situation because you've got shared responsibility models now across multiple clouds. It's got to be way more complicated across SaaS because you've got different policies, you've got a lot more SaaS than you have these three clouds, maybe four if you put it in Alibaba. You know, and yeah, I know this hosting and Oracle and IBM, et cetera, but hyperscalers. And so, but there's dozens, if not hundreds, of SaaS products at yeah. a company. 
So are you able to create a consistent experience and, and for your customers across all those? Now, of course, I know you're not doing hundreds and thousands of SaaS products, but you got you know, pretty big ones here, ServiceNow, Salesforce, right. 365. <clears throat> you know, let's start there. So, so consistency, we're hoping will come. Um, honestly, where the industry is right now, it's getting, getting each one in a state where you're comfortable with it, right? Get it protected, take, yeah. Take a Salesforce, a typical Salesforce uh, environment right now, has a survey we did recently, about 2,000 fields that have sensitive data in it, in some way, shape, or form. <clears throat> uh, you couple that with about 80, 85% of the users can see some fields that are sensitive. How you manage that matrix is, is just really hard, mm. and that's part of what our secure product brings to the table. Helps you understand who can see what and why they can see it. So where are your customer conversations these days? Are you talking to CIOs and CISOs? Is this, is this at that level? Um, it, for some of our customers, yes, it absolutely gets there. <coughs> the, the real core of our discussion is the guy who owns and runs the sales technology, for example, right? Or the ServiceNow technology. Or typically a center of excellence. Um, those have, been, those have been a key way uh, for us to help an organization understand what the risks are, what's necessary, um, what they're having to do given that they don't have a backup now, um, and have you know, those, those shared responsibility model conversations. That's kind of where it starts. Are you finding that most customers are not backing up Salesforce, for example, or ServiceNow, or are they switching? from a competitor over to own backup? Uh, sad to say that it's mostly not. Yeah. Um, it's, it's predominantly, I thought my cloud provider had me covered for that. So the market is huge. Yes. Massive opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, if you think of the number of Salesforce instances not ignoring ServiceNow and Dynamics for a moment, Salesforce talks about, I don't know, 150,000 customers, somewhere in that mark. Uh, we have 500 of them. So how do you get the first penguin off the iceberg? What's the sort of customer conversation like just in terms of you know, educating them, incenting them, and, and kind of pushing them over the edge so that they actually do start protecting their data? Yeah, so, so sadly it sometimes starts with, I had a data loss, I spent weeks working at it, I got 75% of my data back, but not all of it, and that's a real customer quote. Um, and in other cases, it's um, sorry. <coughs> in other cases, it's how do we, you know, it, I, how are you thinking about your Salesforce environment? Particularly customers that have a lot of them. Um, how sensitive is the data? How critical is the data in there? What are you doing to protect it today? We have some people doing um, uh, doing weekly exports, which Salesforce provides. It's a manual step. The first penguin off the iceberg, as you say, is kind of to say, hey, well, why didn't you automate that, right? Um, don't have to rely on somebody on a Tuesday pulling the data down. Um, so that's, those are places where it starts. Yeah, so, you know, Lisa, I was saying earlier that, you know, it, it closed the barn door, right? And that's, that's essentially what Adrian's saying, is you've, you've got, <laughs> you basically got to look for that customer that's been snake bitten. Yeah. But generally speaking, I feel like there's more awareness. I was going to ask you, you know, in this economic climate, is, is data protection recession proof? And I think it's, it's not, right? People sort of, but at the same time, if you're not proactive about it, you really could hurt your business. Absolutely. So, what, what are your thoughts on customers getting more efficient with regard to their, their data estate, their data protection? Can you turn it into a positive? Uh, I think, I think it absolutely is a positive. Um, obviously we're in an environment where CIOs are having to look at every penny they're spending. But if you think about what you're using the data for, you're making business decisions based on this data every day. Your, your entire organization is making business decisions. So if you've got missing data or inaccurate data, you're making suboptimal decisions, right? So yeah. that comes back to data protection 
comes back to brand reputation, yes. and it comes back to how quickly can you get the data back into the shape you need it to be in. And that again is why we focus on the recovery side of the equation, not just the backup side, right? Um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, I would also say that in these recession bit times, you've got fewer people doing as much work as you had before, that raises the chance of errors. Um, and we see across our customer base, 50% of the data corruption or, or data loss uh, occurrences happen because a human did something by mistake. Yeah, sure. And if you up the, the stress of those humans, you're going to get more errors. Should you, when you're talking with IT professionals or maybe sales leaders, should IT be thinking differently about spend for data protection versus general spend, given that the whole point is to be able to recover data when something happens? I think you have to think about it from a kind of a risk and a business continuity perspective, right? Um, data protection tangibly reduces your business risk, right? It gets you back up faster, um, <clears throat> it, it helps you stay running, it helps ensure that the right people have access to the right data and from a secure standpoint. Um, and, and all of those just lower your risk. And if you're having discussions as CIOs should be with their business counterparts around business continuity, with the criticality of the data that's in Salesforce and these other SaaS applications today, I think it's pretty obvious that, that you should have a strong data protection strategy around it. Absolutely. Or else your business is at risk. Right, and nobody wants to be the next headline. No. My last question for you, Adrian, is if there was a billboard near your headquarters, yeah. what's that, what would it say? What's that tagline about own backup that really nails it home? I think it's uh, nobody operating in the cloud should ever lose data. And that's what we're here to do. Excellent. Adrian, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you for talking with Dave and me Great talking about to you own backup, what you guys are doing, and really how organizations need to be very aware of that shared responsibility model. It sounds like you guys are well on your way to helping them understand yeah. that. We appreciate your time. Thank you both. Thank you, best appreciate of luck. It. Our Take pleasure. Care. For our guests and Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in emerging and enterprise tech coverage. Thank you.